Paradox An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. Through genuine expression, discernment, critical thinking, and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, pure time and velvet style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you. To be new to the fullest. Finally here, and I'm like, we're finally here. Well, I'm excited to hear everything. Yeah, me too. <laughs> welcome, welcome to this beautiful heart share. We are here, this alignment of three beautiful women that really deeply resonate with the power of the peacock. And it, we've been deeply inspired this year to really feel into that energy and it has transformed our work. And we really wanted to align together and just take all the gold and the wisdom that has blessed us and just really briefly and succinctly share it with you in the hope that you can access more power for yourself in your life, work, business, love, creating. So um, I'm really, really excited to align with these two women. They're women that I um, find deeply inspiring and that I have a great deal of respect and admiration for. So I'm partaking like you and very excited to be able to listen to them and receive of their goodness. Um, first, we're going to hear from Katerina, um, followed by Alicia and then myself. So I would love to inter introduce Katerina to you. Um, Katerina is an intuitive healer and she was able to heal her own fibromyalgia, anorexia and severe depression. Um, she now helps others in turmoil and pain to find relief, heal and return back to the happy, healthy, hot freaking selves. So uh, Katerina, <laughs> this is your space. Take it away on Peacock Power, baby. I first met the Peacock when I was, how many years, four years ago, and I was in Hawaii spending time with a shaman there. I had never really considered the peacock before then, and it was something that was sort of just on the periphery of me, but there was a peacock there at the sanctuary. It was an eco-sanctuary, and the peacock's name was Deepak. <laughs> so Deepak the Peacock. It was the most horrible <laughs> thing ever. And I got to spend about four months there at the Eco Sanctuary studying with the shaman. And over time, I started to realize just the majesty of this peacock that was on the land. You know, it has the most shrill screech and it has um, the most amazing plumage that spreads open. And just seeing how it moves, how it jaunts, how it, how it saunters through life was just so touching to me. And I didn't realize the medicine it had for me until I was actually on a shamanic journey with the shaman there. And she was having us enter into each one of our chakras and find our power animal for each one. So it wasn't just one spirit animal, but it was a, a totem for each, every single chakra. And when I got to my throat, I saw this peacock with this beautiful plumage and that has stuck with me for the past four years and it's guided me to heal my voice and to heal my communication and my expression because like Lisa said, I, I had anorexia, I had fibromyalgia, I was completely shut down in my communication centers. Um, I suffered, I, it's not on the list, but I suffered from Hashimoto's, an autoimmune disorder wow. and that's my thyroid gland, right? So it was like my body was literally attacking my thyroid, my communication. You know, that is what the throat chakra is associated with. And so by embracing this, this powerful energy of expression and really putting myself out there, I mean, the first iteration of my business was be you to the fullest. And when I think about that, I think about a peacock spreading open its, its, its plumage, right? So when we do that, we actually allow ourselves to tap into our own truth. And 
speaking truth and feeling truth is what heals us because it, it eradicates all of the stresses, all of the areas of ourself where we've been shut down and feeling numb and, and just completely disempowered, right? So uh, that is how I met my inner peacock. Do you have any questions about that? Like, <sighs> I'm like, I love the idea of a totem animal for every chakra. I'm like, wow, I want to do that. But I, I, I love, I can just feel the opening. You know, when you talk about mm -hmm. the plumage opening, I just feel like your, your throat chakra was just had permission to open. Like it was a little yeah. bit tight before. So that's so magical. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. beautiful. I've, I've had uh, similar thyroid issues as well. And the peacock was all about uh, finding my voice and true expression and leaving a 30 year career. And so it, I can really relate to that too. Isn't that so fascinating how the same archetype kind of spills <laughs> over to so many different people? Mm -hmm. Like I found it myself. I didn't even know it was a thing until <laughs> I started connecting with other people about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's that energy totem. Very cool. Yeah. So peacock medicine is something that I actually use every single day. Uh, it's something I, I keep my little peacock right here in my workspace because it reminds me to be honest and authentic every single day. Whether it is that I'm putting stuff out there on the internet to share with other people, I always check in back with myself and, and re ask myself, is this really my true expression that wants to come through? Is, or is this me trying to adapt myself and be something else? Because that was what I did for all those years while I was, you know, deteriorating my thyroid gland and, and everything like that, you know, so you can literally feel in your body that essence of, you know, like Lisa said, like pluming, like, like you're just like opening up and that medicine can really move through you. And it, and it stems from your heart, moves up through your throat and then out your mouth. Mm. So that is that practice of using the, ener the, the peacock medicine for me. Um, in all of the writing that I do, it's important that that is, present otherwise I just don't put it out there because mm. I, I realize that there are certain times when I'm not being congruent and authentic with myself and my my voice right and I'm hiding things and I'm holding things back and I'm I'm not wanting the trueness to come through and that's because of those psychological barriers where you know we're thinking oh no what if they think bad of me oh no are they going to see the real me the flaws the warts the whatever you know mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and you drop that you drop mm -hmm. all that crap mm -hmm. and the peacock gets to shine brilliantly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the peacock, I'm sure it has a couple dinged feathers here and there from just going through its life, but it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. you're just sitting there and it's, it's radiance and it's brightness and it's brilliance. And that's all anyone sees. Mm -hmm. So even though you're not perfect, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's still perfect in the expression. And it's just such a rich, um, feast you know every post that you make Katerina I'm like an avid follower of you on Facebook as you would know from all my likes and comments and little creatures going ah, like I love them. and you know I just love that people you know can access your peacock medicine almost through your posts and I really honor that because what's good for us is also good for the people that feel drawn to us because as healers we're really just healing ourselves and people that are on that same journey they just gravitate and go oh, I need the full plumage in the throat area. Yes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, yes. That is so true. When I think about all of the other people who have gravitated towards me since I started using my voice more, and it was completely accidental. It wasn't something that I ever set out to do, right? Mm -hmm. I started sharing on Facebook and on YouTube you know, those, those four years ago. And I, my first YouTube video that I ever made, I was sitting in the, like, like sunken in my chair and I was just staring at the camera for 14 minutes. It's the most painful video you will ever watch. <laughs> but I was mortified yeah. because I had acne all over my face. I had braces. I was just like, I just didn't want to be there, mm. but I did it because it was my next step in healing. Mm -hmm. It was the next step I needed to take in order to 
to heal myself because I knew that I needed to if I was ever going to live life the way that I saw it in my head, mm-hmm. you know? So I needed to, to break out of that self-imposed shell. Mm-hmm. And so that's where the blooming happens. And, and when I share on social media, I'm sharing for me. Mm-hmm. And it just so happens that other people are sort of like, oh, yeah, I like that. That's so awesome. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. But it's that journey. Mm-hmm. And, and when you tap into your own peacock medicine, as I hope everyone listening will do, you'll start noticing this greater unfolding in your life and you'll start noticing that beautiful things will just start happening in your world. Your relationships will get deeper and more authentic. You're going to connect with people that you never even imagined you would. Like Lisa, you're in Australia. Like <laughs> yeah, you connected with me because well, I'm, um, you I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an Australian in New Zealand. So, you know, and then I, <laughs> I've been yearning to go to Hawaii and then I see that that's on your like to-do list and I'm just like, oh, I'm going to live vicariously through you for now and, you know, at least, <laughs> you know, Vancouver, it, the British Columbia, yeah? Yeah, that right? and I was just in Hawaii last year. So. Oh! It's yeah, hilarious. Hilarious. I mean, <laughs> So the interconnection is hilarious to me. Mm, it's beautiful. Profound. <sighs> I love it. This is gorgeous, Katerina. Like, thank you so, so much for just being willing to show up and just transparently sharing your journey. Do you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. it's just exactly what we need to hear because it can be so compelling to look at what other people are doing and just want to mimic it with where they're at. But people Mm -hmm. didn't see you when you were like, that's not really me. You know, and where we are. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we just need to feel into the next step to us for now, you know, and allow ourselves to be guided from within. So I really honor that you do that, sweetheart. Thank you so much for your gorgeous heart share. You're welcome. So shall I introduce uh, Alicia? That would be gorgeous. Thank you. All right. So Alicia Kent is a scientist, body, mind, acupressurist, intuitive artist, and energy coach. Alicia left a 30-year career as a medical lab scientist to follow her soul's purpose, creating healing meditation mandalas and using energy work to create new paradigms in life. This profound transformation occurred during a period of a dark night of the soul for her. She has risen from the ashes and created an incredibly beautiful and blessed life in the process and now assists others to do the same. Yay! Thank you, Katarina. <laughs> and thank you so much, Lisa, for organizing this. And thank you for introducing me to Katarina. It's just been such, uh, even though I've, we've just met, I feel like I've known her for a long time. And same with you, Lisa. I feel like I've known you for a long time, too. Mm. So I'm just really excited to be here. And um, through my journey, I first uh, discovered the peacock actually probably about 20 years ago or maybe not quite that long ago at least 15 when one escaped and showed up in the art but I didn't realize his message at the time it took me a few more years to, but they kept kind of just randomly appearing in my life and and then when I looked back at the times when they had appeared in my life it was always a time when I wasn't listening or speaking my truth in my in my life path and of course, I didn't see it then. But now when you, you know, retrospect and looking back is always more powerful sometimes. And you're like, oh, that's what it was all about. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And then most recently, when I finally really, really got it and sank into it was um, as I really started sinking into what I was actually doing and what, you know, what was I doing and how was I going to bring that forward? And it just felt so overwhelming, everything that I was bringing forward Um, and, you know, integrating the science and quantum physics and energy work and art and intuitiveness. And it's like, oh, what what am I actually doing here? (laughs) And so I was trying to find a symbol or logo or something to kind of market or brand or create or work from. And so I came across this little meditation, like how to find your your logo, right? And I thought, oh, okay, whatever, I'll just do this little meditation thing. And and this peacock came, and I was like, a peacock? Are you <laughs> Can't be that. <laughs> so then I just really started um, looking into 
um, the peacock and it was totally so bang on in so many ways, including, you know, one of the, um, symbolisms of the peacock is Kuan Yin and the energy work I do is very connected to Kuan Yin. Right. I've been told that I was very connected to Kuan Yin energy in many past lives. And so there was just so many resonances. I was just like, Oh my God. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> and so it was just like such a, like another layer of awakening when I, when I discovered that and then started stepping into it. And so it really was everything I was doing in my life and everything I'm also doing with clients. And in particular, I work with awakening women, women who are, you know, just discovering their treasures and who they are and what they are about life. And, and what I'm really have realized is I'm really helping women create a safe, sacred space so that they do feel safe to mm -hmm. awaken their full selves. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, for me, um, going from this very scientific paradigm, you know, uh, I don't want to say the good old boys, but the scientific community is pretty mm -hmm. kind of cut and dried. Mm -hmm. And I worked in the lab for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was a young, keen lab scientist going into the lab and I worked in hematology and was looking at cells down the microscope, right? And I remember talking about, oh, wow, the energy of these cells, you know, and like I was feeling the energy of these dead cells under the microscope. I thought that was normal, right? But everyone was like, <laughs> Pretty like, um, okay, girl, <laughs> we're going to like send you somewhere. <laughs> so I kind of got the message that maybe that wasn't such a good thing to be talking about in the lab. And so I really shut down my intuition. I'm an empath. And so I really was shutting that down. And I shut it down for 30 years. So it's no wow. wonder, as Katarina was saying, you know, <laughs> that I developed um, uh, thyroid issues. And it took a pretty big hit over the head by the universe before I was, you know, because I had this great career. I was department head of hematology. And so it took a pretty big thump over the head <laughs> to awaken me fully. And but then as I really started um, working with the healing energy I'm doing and, you know, creating mandalas and, you know, um, that my energy was in the mandalas, that there was healing energy in the mandalas to really start speaking um, my truth about that. I felt kind of scared to do that because of, there was this big um, scientific community that I was still quite connected to. And as well, you know, I do have past life memories of being, um, well, killed, tortured. <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> yes, many, many past life memories, some very nasty ones for, for doing exactly what I'm doing in this life, you know, mm. um, and that's integrating science and intuition and epigenetics and teaching women what epigenetics actually is and how to bring that energy into their lives. And so it's really, um, you know, teaching women, uh, assisting them to work with their very deep, deep emotions that they have held into their body and to feel safe, um, helping them process and release that energy. And I found that with most women that I work with, that a lot of energy is stuck, not only in the throat, but in the chest and the breast area. And so mm -hmm. when we think about what that blocked emotional energy flow in the chest and breast leads to is a lot of dysfunction and disease. And so I'm just in the process of writing um, a program called Treasure Your Tatas that will be very much dealing with science, epigenetics, and intuition, and energy work, and everything. And I'm so excited about it. But at the same time, you know, every once in a while, I'm like, Ooh, oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so because it is the whole, you know, speaking this whole truth that hasn't really uh, necessarily been spoken in the same way before. So, and, you know, a lot of awakening women are, um, you know, as – You've talked about, Katerina, you know, anxiety issues around eating and a lot of, so a lot of awakening women experience depression and anxiety and, and a real sensitivity to their environment because of what's going on there, you know, trying to open up, but it's scary. It's really mm -hmm. scary. Um, they've been taught, you know, it's not appropriate to be angry. It's not appropriate to take time to grieve. You know, we're always told just like move through things, move through things, you know, got to be strong, got to, you know, keep yeah. up with the housework, <laughs> and the work, and, you know, do the dishes and laundry, <laughs> want to be sitting there meditating and stuff. And so I think I really I'm developing a rash just as I hear you say those words. Right 
<laughs> so it's really, um, and, a, and a lot of women are get anxious and depressed because as they start shifting their vibration and their energy, they notice their relationships change a lot and not just their friendships, but, you know, their marriages. And um, so it's really about helping them see why that's happening and helping them feel safe to move forward through through that. And with that comes with uh, creating energetic boundaries and what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And so it's really, you know, creating sacred spaces, body, mind, spirit, your environment, everything counts. And so that's, you know, because for a long time I didn't understand how my mandalas had to do with it and, you know, how did all this fit together? But now I'm really getting a much clearer picture of how it all fits together and what it means. Eventually we'll know exactly what we're doing, hey? <laughs> I know. And then we'll be doing something else. So yeah. that's I was joking with someone. I don't even know if I'm going to get business cards again because I just can't keep up to myself with mm. what I'm actually doing. <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, so, so there's something to be said for that. Mm. So, it, and really for me, the um, the peacock as well as, you know, speaking our truth is, is about the protection to the symbolism of the protection. The, the feathers are very protective and, you know, the peahens are very, very um protective of their young and very actually vicious towards anyone who tries to more so than a lot of other birds and I was surprised to to learn as well that the peacock symbolizes and uh, the phoenix is the closest bird to the phoenix and through my journey I've definitely um, gone down to being fried uh, one of my I was actually in Hawaii twice last summer but also in 2007 and all this stuff happened and I went and saw an intuitive there and because I lost my voice there when I was there. One of the things that happened, she was like, oh, Pele has fried you and your life will never be the same. And I'm like, great. <laughs> but sure <laughs> enough, um, <laughs> yeah, what's the good news? Sure enough, you know, um, I had just started stepping into my healing work. My marriage ended um, right at a time when I had no income. So there I was, two kids, no income, a mortgage, all sorts of things. But so it's really um, represents um, a rebirth to me as well. And, you know, a, awakening to our true selves is a rebirth of our soul. And so to me, it's very much symbolic of that. And the eyes on the peacock are said to represent um, the ability to see the past and present and future. And so it's very much about stepping into our intuition, our clairvoyant gifts, which also happens for many, most women who are awakening. And, you know, they feel very sensitive and they think their sensitivity is a bad thing. And so helping them learn that their sensitivity is a good thing. It's actually that they're very intuitive and that's okay and that's good and how beautiful that is. And so this uh, peacock really symbolizes that for me. And it really just symbolizes beauty. Um, one of the ways that I got through my uh, time was just um, finding something beautiful every day. And that's really when I started using Instagram. It was just my goal. Like even if I, you know, didn't feel like I could get out of bed that day or cook for my kids or anything, I was just like, okay, I got to find one beautiful thing today. So I'd take my, you know, and that's kind of really how I started doing the, um, I started using my big camera more my because photography was one of my real loves when I was younger and started creating the mandalas. So, and also to remember that uh, so much beauty comes from within inside of us and uh, that, you know, that we all deserve to be peacocks and dress beautiful and, and have beauty in our life. And so how we can, you know, be a peacock in our life, how can we do this? And it, it goes back to, again, this creating sacred space. And, you know, what does that mean to you? And how do you be true to yourself and radiate beauty every day, knowing because you are beautiful, that beauty comes from within inside, knowing you deserve to have beauty in your spaces, no matter you know, what your financial situation might be, you can find something beautiful every day and to remind yourself that you're worth worth that beauty and creating an environment where you feel safe and beautiful. And when I talk about environment, I mean emotional, spiritual, and, you know, the whole shebang. And so I help people with the energy work and body work I do to feel safe in their own bodies and to 
feel safe. I work with women with anger a lot. And to just feel safe with all of their emotions and that to be proud as a peacock and feel safe to express all of your beauty and self to the world. So thank you so much. Breathing that in, Alicia. (laughs) Like breathing in the permission for beauty and the permission to have a beautiful environment. That's... I feel more permission. Do you know what I mean? I think I think we can be afraid to want to be beautiful as women and yet it's one of the most admired traits of women. Mm-hmm. But we fear our own beauty and we think it's deficient and you know, but we don't let ourselves be as beautiful as we truly are. So that is yeah. so beautiful. And one of the most beautiful manifestations I have to say that I see every day is in my twenty one year old daughter. She is so not afraid to express her beauty, and she's so gorgeous. Mm. She posted a picture of herself with The Bachelor the other night that she ran into in Calgary. (laughs) (laughs) And she's just there so proud. I was like, that's my girl. She posted this beautiful picture that I shared in one of the groups of herself, topless, with her back to the camera over this big canyon with her arms spread, you know. I was like, like, that just makes me so proud of of, um, who I am and you know, how I developed, you know, she's a manifestation of, of, you know, my mothering and my, the journey. She was just a young, you know, fairly young child as I went through all of that. So it's like, she's still turned out great even through all of that. So well, that makes maybe your happy. peacock medicine has actually allowed her to be as great as she is, sweetheart. You know, she's been partaking yeah. from you. Yeah, she has. And I hear it in her words. So that kind of makes me all teary eyed. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alicia. And I'm excited to hear from you, Lisa. And <laughs> <laughs> so Lisa Black, because I don't have this memorized. So yeah, sure. me if I kind of make sure I get everything here because there's, oh, there's lots of goodness to share. Lisa Black is a heart coach. Lisa was led to heal her pattern of anxiety and binge eating and breakups. And she now leads and guides women through their own self-healing experience, home to the power of their truth. And I feel so blessed to have met you, Lisa. You know, we met, I guess, a couple months ago now. And and I love your part of the world. That was one of my big adventures. I backpacked by myself through New Zealand and Australia when I was 25. Wow. <laughs> That's lots more stories from that to share. But <laughs> oh, thank you for the beautiful introduction. And I just feel like it's just been such, such a rich experience already, just hearing you're different. And this is why I wanted to create this. I'm like, these women are just housing so much powerful wisdom and knowledge about peacocks that I feel it needs to be shared. Like we need to be able to articulate and express it so that people can find the, the why, what and the how for themselves to be able to access that power. And just hearing how the peacocks have kind of come to you is really, that's totally um, synchronistic for me as well. Like they just started kind of appearing and you know, a peacock is a beautiful bird, but it's a, it's a peacock. You kind of go, what's with the peacocks everywhere. They just started kind of showing up in my life. And you know, when we are awakening and when we are really acknowledging our intuitive gifts and our powers, we really start paying attention to signs and symbols. And whenever I see a repeating anything, I give it a lot of attention now. So I kept on seeing these peacocks and all, you know, pictures, live ones, you know, they'd pop up on your Facebook feed. And I'm just like, this is so curious. I wonder what a peacock symbolizes. So you Google it, the source of all wisdom. You're like, hey, Google, and you're like, Google, teach me of peacock. And, um, you know, what I, love, what I love with having a really open heart and open mind is that tingles always confirm the truth that we need to hear. And for me, mm-hmm. this word popped up and it was incorruptible. That the peacock is a representation of purity and incorruptibility. And it just jolted me because I thought I had really been taught and picked up and assumed those messages that, you know, really putting out our plumage and really shining in our glory was really something that as a woman is frowned upon and something that you really shouldn't be doing. And so for me, 
hearing the word incorruptible really supported me to allow myself to step into that because my biggest fear leading up to this year was that if I truly stepped into my power, I would become that evil, dark witch demonstrous. <laughs> Which is just hilarious. Like, I think now I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're dark. Yeah, yeah, you're a dark, (laughs) evil witch and you're going to rule the world with your destruction. But our ego and my own fears would play that message to me in order to keep me small. And so really that peacock medicine for me was really around owning my own incorruptibility. And that really gave me permission to sink into my power and own the wisdom that I was somehow accessing. Yeah. Like there's no, we don't know how we're doing what we're doing. Doesn't matter because we're doing it. And I just owned it, claimed it and started, yeah, speaking and sharing, look, this is what I do. And, um, you know, it's it without that peacock repeatedly showing up, I don't know where I would be. I would not have been able to step into understanding that, when you come from pure intentions, you bless your own life and the lives of everyone around you. And that now supports all of my work because I know that I only intend to bring love and light to everything that I do. And that doesn't resonate with some and and some people, it, it just totally lights us up. So like all of you, you know, it really is that full plumage is really around sharing our gifts, our talents and our beauty with the world because we're you know, we're so conditioned not to because as women, we look to the girls that are, you know, or the women that are owning their beauty and their power. And depending mm-hmm. on where we're at, we'll really admire that or we'll get jealous. So my mm-hmm. role that I played as a young emerging woman was to look at women who owned that and was locked in jealousy. And I just could not allow myself to see that I was there. And, um, you know, I love working in the world of emotion and, and really helping people to understand the messages behind emotion. And I reclaim the message of jealousy that the people that activate my jealousy are helping to me to reclaim my hidden desires. So I would see these really sophisticated, gorgeous women prancing along and feel the jealousy rise up and be able to just take it and go, thank you for showing me more of who I know I'm meant to be as well. And so for me now, I'm like full plumage, full plumage. Full plumage, because you're really hoping, yeah, that somehow in some way, someone who doesn't know that it's safe and okay to own their plumage is going to see you and go, you know what, she's doing it, freaking heck, so can I. And that really lights up my world. I kind of, everything that I do, I kind of am trying to communicate to who I once was to really inspire myself because we know what it is to feel trapped and caged in the smallness and the fear And I just go, there's just no time for this. There's work to be done. There's fun to be had. There's joy to be experienced. And so um, I really think, you know, sharing a full plumage because I look and behold each of you and see how majestic and how divine it is. And, you know, you see the, um, what are they called when they're white? Sorry. Aura. Oh, the peacocks that are white. like Oh, the uh, albino. Yeah, the albino. When you see them, you're like, whoa, that's like beauty on a whole nother level. And you kind of see the differences and the different peacocks and you just go, we're all beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, we're all just so magnificent. So showing up and seeing that some people are going to go, who do you think you are? And other people are going to go, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. God, I think I'm beautiful too. And I just know that that's the space that we all come from. And that is just really really magical. My last point is really around stepping into that power, stepping into that full plumage is around giving ourselves that one thing. And a lot of my work has been around really helping people to heal the mother wound in particular, but also the father wound. But for women, because that's my focus, it's always the mother wound. It's always the primary place where we keep ourselves small and we keep ourselves disempowered. And what I love having seen and witnessed with the beautiful people that have allowed me into their hearts and lives is that it doesn't matter how loving and affectionate and nurturing or not all of our mothers were, everyone walks out of childhood with unmet needs. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been really liberating because I've been privy to some very dark experiences between mother and child. And I've been privy to some apparently really beautiful, rich, but yet still codependent, still bonded with agreements. And so it doesn't really matter what relationship we've had with our mothers, they've been the right ones for us. And if we can feel into that resentment of where we go, 
I didn't get this from my mother and go, I'm now going to stop giving my power away, wishing that she'd done that for me because she couldn't, wouldn't, didn't, like that's done. And I'm going to invest that in myself. And so I didn't, I didn't feel nurtured. I didn't feel like I had full permission to express all of my power and be safe with my beauty and my sensuality and, and my divinity. And I just go, so I give that to myself. And I go, I can feel that you guys are both investing in yourselves as well. A love that we maybe didn't know. And I think that's what makes it so potent. And I think, you know, that's something that I really hope everyone listening to this can really take and feel the power from each of us and be able to feel in and own their own power within and go, I'm going to water that. I'm going to sprinkle love and light on that. And I'm going to give myself support to really step up and shine out in my own way, in my own time. So, um, oh, I love talking about peacocks now and I feel like I want to have more bloody peacocks <laughs> in my life. I'm like, we've got like a <laughs> garden statue that's a peacock and, you know, I have, you know, you know, Alicia, your mandalas are just so beautiful. You mentioned your photography and how you're able to take these beautiful pictures but rearrange them into these magnificent powerful mandalas and I just go you know I see Katarina with her makeup it's peacock and her website background is peacock. and then she's got peacock awesome. she got the peacock statue and I go you know what I'm gonna do with a bit more peacock in my life as well so I, I really hope that um that this heart share from all of us can really create space in people's lives to access their power by visualizing and seeing these beautiful majestic peacocks and um I'm really I'm really excited to hear what um, you all are going to think of what we're sharing here. We would love to hear, you know, what has stood out for you that's been really powerful about Peacock Power and what questions do you have around what we've shared because um, I've just learned so much from listening to Katerina and Alicia. So I just want to thank both of you for participating in this. I've never done anything like this before, but I knew it was meant to come forward. So thank you for playing with me. It's been so fun. And um, thank you. Thank you for putting this together. It's been very beautiful and special. And uh, I look forward to not only us, but uh, everyone who hears this and sees this um, to step into their peacock power and their peacock energy. And uh, as we know, when we shift our energy, it shifts everyone's energy around us. So. And just a few more people every day stepping into their own power is what's really going to change the world. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Amen. Yeah. So. Shall we do a little peacock shimmy goodbye for everyone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you'd get straight in, Katerina. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Love this. Bye-bye. Um,